Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get started, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Archim of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear or forbear. And sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird Hebrew Israelite foreigners, the Hebrew Israelites scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is a topic I wanted to get into titled, If you don't give germs a pass with your body, then do the same with false doctrine. And I wanted to start this one off in the book of Habakkuk. I believe it was the second chapter in the second verse. And it reads, And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by his faith and the reason i got this scripture is because it's a lot of false doctrines going around about like you know how are we going to be saved um you know you know, you got camps and you got individual Israelites trying to push this monogamy bullshit from the Christian church, you know, trying to push the hell doctrine. And more recently, I've seen on the beloved brother, I'm on, I'm on our bots page that is some bug out talking about he's he's the Messiah. Another one. It's nothing new, but, you know, it's, it's just all types of stuff going on. But I got this, I pulled this precept out because it's important to realize that Jake has always had a history, like the uh, like one of the beloved brothers from the Kansas City camp said in one of his recent videos, I believe it was, um, I think it was this week, and if not, it was last week. He pulled out the precept that showed that Jake always had this habit of thinking that a prophecy won't happen because, oh, uh, a prophet spoke about it centuries ago or you know, in some cases, even like a millennia ago. But then, you know, when destruction does finally happen, those same Jake had a history of being distraught and asking why is this happening? You know, just like just like having like multiple, you know, multiple spirits on you, you know, multiple personalities. It's like Jake, one part of Jake will remember, you know, they'll say some crazy shit. Then the other part of Jake, you know, when they tag in, when that personality tags in in the driver's seat, then it's like, oh, what's happening? Where am I? And then. You know, it just shows how Jake has a history of abusing the prophets and how Jake also wants to go up their own way. Jake will think that because, oh, yeah, the prophecy said that such and such is going to happen and this is going to be destroyed at this time. But, you know, we're still here. I can still drink my liquor. I can still, you know, I can still have as much sex as I want. I can still do this. I can still do that. I still have a job that nothing's going to happen. And that's just off. And a lot of Jake's also think that they can make up their own way of of um uh, of salvation for israel when the prophecy clearly lets you know that only lord yahweh can bring salvation it's not going to come up no other way it's not going to come by unity camps it's not going to come about fucking trying to do all this charity bullshit for the whole nation of israel which is going off because the whole nation of israel is not righteous on this side it's only the one-third hopeful elect remnant of the so-called negroes latinos and native americans and the speckled bird hebrew israelites who are indeed the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to scriptures and according to the blessings and the curses that are placed upon them that, that are for a sign. But it's, it's just too many, it's just too many Jakes out here that don't understand that them going up their own way, like moving based in them, moving based in emotion. It's not, it's not a, it's not a Hebrew Israelite custom. It's not to say, we don't have emotions, but to let emotions be the driving force behind our actions, the primary driving force that's off. You have a lot of Jake that will twist scriptures to justify their emotions. And I mentioned it in a previous video, but I'll never forget, you know, when I used to watch that We Woke channel, I'll never forget him being, you know, questioned and rebuked 
on, you know, trying to say that, <laughs> just trying to say polygyny is a sin. Trying to say a man, a man having more than one wife is a sin. And that it is, and trying to say that it's a sin because if it wasn't a sin, the Heavenly Father wouldn't have punished uh, King David. He wouldn't have had strife between uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, and his concubine, Hagar. You know, just a bunch of stupid shit. You know, and then it just shows that these Jakes is unlearned because at no point in time was everything completely perfect. Since the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden, we've always had a number of, um, how can I say, we've always had a number of, you know, trials and tribulations. It's part of, it's part of being in the flesh. Nothing's going to be perfect, but back then things were in order. And, you know, and it just shows that like these Jakes, they don't really have an understanding. Like they, they'll say anything out their mouth, especially once they get a following, because they more afraid of losing face than they are of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, no matter what they say. And they use the worst possible example of Israelites to try to say that something is unclean or something's a sin. Like they use they use the example of bug outs that aren't practicing marriage, that aren't dealing with these women for the sake of marriage to try to say that it's unlawful. It's not unlawful. It's you you just using the example, you're just using the worst possible examples to label something sinful that's not sinful. The same thing Esau, Edom, the so-called white man does when he labels Jake as, a, you know, like he puts the worst example of Jake in the news all the time, for the most part, most of the time. So that it puts the label of, you know, Judah being nothing but a bunch of criminals. You know, it puts the label of Judah, Benjamin and Levi, the southern kingdom being nothing but a bunch of criminals. And, you know, they just they just they have this thing where they they use propaganda against us, man. And this is why we got to be occupied in prophecy, no matter what none of these unity camp Israelites or nothing or none of these clowns say. Because they cherry pick the scriptures. Don't get it fucked up. You Just because you've been watching, you know, just because you've been watching a, a Jake for like, I don't know how many months. And, you know, they've been consistent thus far. You always got to stay vigilant. You got to realize that all it takes is one slip up and, you know, then you can see who's who based off of how they handle rebuke. So long as you do it in order, you know, like if you if you just honestly inquire about a question and they telling you some clearly some shit that's clearly off in the scriptures, mark them and avoid them. Like the book of Romans, the 16th chapter and the 17th verse says, because this same individual, Kelly Richardson, on that We Woke channel bullshit, which is a, I don't know, it's a clown ass name to me personally, but. You know, this same individual tried to sit right there sometime later and had a lesson saying that chicken was unclean. And it, it just it just it just goes to show that, you know, Yahweh Bash Me Out his words truly can, are truly a discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Like you can get in the book of Hebrews, chapter four, verse 12. It's truly a discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart, because if if this if like he said, this isn't about what he said. It's about what Hamashiach says. These are his words. If it's really about that, you wouldn't be trying to make, you wouldn't be trying to be the new mediator of what's clean and what's unclean. If it's clearly written in the book, and when I say clearly written in the book, I don't mean, oh, you just read it in English and take it at face value. No, that's that's what a lot of you Jakes do. You know, even Jakes that know the Lashwan Kodash or, you know, that know the, the Hebrew and the Assyrian script, the Yiddish, you know, these same Jakes that know that, they still don't, they still miss the context because the Rechakwadash is not dealing with them. They don't have it. So these same Jakes will say something crazy like chicken is unclean because they felt like once their congregation backed them on the whole, oh, polygyny is unlawful. And the next thing you know, they can just go ahead and push, oh, chicken is unclean. Just to sound deep, like the Elder Manasseh Zakba always says, that deep demon. Jake really does have that fucking deep demon. And it's like, it's the spirit that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has revealed that to the sincere, hopeful elect to know what's righteous and what's wicked. Just because you may not understand it. Like if you get tripped up on the law, that's one thing. You inquire of people that's above you. You know, you inquire of people that's elder to you. Even if you're not part of a camp, it ain't nothing for you to inquire if you come in meekness and sincerity. But these Jakes don't do that. That's why they start their own quote unquote ministries or their own churches. You know, they got that Hebrew Christian thing going on, which is what this dude is. You know, this video isn't about him. It's just to make the point. He's just like the first example that popped up in my head that kind of shows like how bugged out a lot of these Jakes can be. They and not not every bug out is going to come off like Chewbacca, you know, like that Jake that the beloved brother Amon Abad did the video about that Jake that's acting like he's the Messiah. Tell us, come unto me and you'll have everlasting life. Some weirdo shit, man. 
not every Jake is is oh it's like not every Jake is gonna be an overt bug out. You got a lot of covert bug outs. You know, Jake that seem like, you know, they walk upright and stuff like that. You know, they they don't look too weird. They dress normal. They don't got too many weird hairstyles or nothing like that. They speak eloquently enough. But when you listen to their doctrine, you see that this Jake don't got it. You see that the Heavenly Father's not dealing with them. And that's where you have to apply Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. That's where you have to apply uh, the book of Romans chapter 16, verse 17. That's where you have to apply. Let me just go ahead and get that. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved. Salakia. Study to shew thyself approved unto the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. So if you really, if you're studying to show yourself approved, it doesn't matter if you're part of a camp or if you're part of your, you know, whatever all these jakes got going on nowadays. You know, some of these jakes say that they know that they're Hebrew Israelites, but their congregation gives the, it has the spirit of Christianity on it. You know, it's just weird. Like, I don't, I don't like it. It's disgusting. It's, it, it's like really a, a prime example of being lukewarm to me because these jakes, they basically are just like the Christian church. They just use Hebrew words every now and then. Essentially, that's what they, that's what they are, you know, and they worry too much about the opinions of their congregation when they worry about rightly dividing the word of truth and they don't comprehend what salvation is nor who it's for. But essentially, this is what has to be applied no matter where you are in your walk. And then the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai will do the rest. He'll, it'll guide you in the all truth. You know, you got to believe that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is a reward of those that diligently seek him. And the way that you show that you diligently seeking him is you don't fall for cults of personality. You don't worry about what these jakes have to say. You don't give a fuck if they have 200,000 subscribers on their channel. You, you, if you feel like, if you, if not, let me use the right term. I don't want to use feelings. If you, if something in the spirit is rubbing you wrong about what somebody's teaching and it's based on the scripture, that unclean feeling you have about that person is based on scripture and you've been studying to show yourself approved, then you ask and inquire. You be like the church of Berea. You have that same mind that they had when dealing with the apostle Paul. And I'm glad the apostles and elders of Great Millstone brought that example out because that's one of the examples that helps me stay firm in the faith, no matter what I hear, no matter what I see, no matter how a congregation presents itself, no matter how a camp presents itself. You always got to be on the lookout because the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and the sincere Arkham, they always say it. They don't it's, they don't say that, oh, everybody in this camp is on point. No, nah, they they say like they say that the, there's members of the hopeful elect in every camp. It's just a matter of. It's just a matter of them if they are with a camp that's teaching the off doctrine it's a matter of them rebuking them about it you know bringing it to attention bringing it to council and then if you know the campus is so out of order you can't even bring it to council then you got to come out of that just like the uh, john the baptist did he was he was in the temple and he was of the loins and lineage of aaron so he was you know eligible to be high priest but he saw the corruption of the temple and he started to preach and baptize in the wilderness but you also got to watch out for Jakes that do that because you you have a lot of Jakes that use John the Baptist. They, they abuse John the Baptist's example. And that's why they start their own YouTube channels. That's why they start their own camps or their own congregation. And they heap disciples unto themselves. You know, you got a lot of Jakes that do that and they teach off as doctrine, man. So you got to be you got to be aware of that. You got Jakes that will use great men in the scriptures that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahshua was dealing with as a excuse for them just, you know, wanting to do their own thing and those jakes that typically do that they self-willed israelites they don't like rebuke they don't like correction and they think they know everything and that's not the spirit to be around nor is that a spirit that you need to learn from meld with you don't need to do no type of building with a spirit like that you got to mark them and you got to avoid them all right so the next one i wanted to get was the book of john chapter 10 Starting at verse one, and, and this is red letters. So this lawyer, how was I speaking? Whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Serapis Christos, Jesus Christo, uh, Yahusha, Yahoshua, uh, Yeshia, Yahshua, and Yeshua. It's not none of those names. It's Yahushua, Hamashiach, meaning He is the Deliverer. 
and Hamashiach is his title, meaning the anointed one. But the book of John, chapter 10, verse 1, and it reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And I wanted to stop right there, verse five, real quick and touch on touch on that part of the precept. This can be applied. It, it, this can be applied in at least two different ways. It just depends on, you know, the, the measure of faith and spiritual discernment that Yahweh Bashim Yahushat has given you at a particular point in your walk. Verse five right here says, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. This can be applied to, it can be applied, one, if you hear a false doctrine that you know is false, and this is your first time hearing it, and you examine it, and you, you know, you, you question the individual who spoke on it about that doctrine, and they, and, you know, depending on their response, if they say something that can prove that precept, if they say something that can prove that doctrine with the correct precepts, then okay, cool, you let it go. But if they are trying, if they just say some stuff you know is just off and is not in line with the scriptures, then you mark them right then and there and you avoid them. You rebuke them. You know? And then the second way that can be applied is if you study it, you know, study it to the best of your ability, given, you know, based off of the measure of understanding and wisdom that the Yahweh Bashmi Yahshua is giving you at that point in your walk and you still can't necessarily see that that person is off you know you, i would i would recommend personally that you keep on praying for the understanding you pray that you how about me i gives it to you in due time because in my case some individuals i used to watch i knew right away like the moment they said some off shit that was when i marked them and i avoided them like you know that we woke channel i knew that they was off you know at the time i was just hungering for the truth so you know i just didn't understand the importance of names but a channel called We Woke, you know, it just seemed like I should have known right then and there. It just seemed too, too, you know, it seemed too black for me. It didn't seem Hebrew Israelite enough. And when I say it, it didn't seem Hebrew Israelite, I mean, like, understanding that the he, the biblical Hebrew Israelites are the only people that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is dealing with. And that's the only people that the Holy Bible is written to. That's the only people that were, that were given the laws, statutes commandments the precepts the judgments the covenants and the promises of the heavenly father the god of heaven and earth whom the world ignorantly calls god jehovah yahweh yahuwah allah and all of these other false names that are not his name his name is yahweh which means he exists he's the ancient of days because he has no beginning and he has no end and hebrew names hebrew names are nomen omens the meaning is in the name so his there's no other name above his name there's no other name that describes him perfectly than that name because that is his name that's the name he gave to his chosen people the hebrew israelites so understanding that names do hold meaning the whole we woke thing the whole we woke now type crap like looking back in hindsight the name should have it should have given me personally the wherewithal to realize that it, dude don't do don't got it all the way because yeah you can be woke right now but the scripture says many are called but few are chosen so you can be called meaning yeah you can pull out precepts you can do this you can do that you can get to the lashwan kadash but even during your period of being called you don't got the deeper breakdowns you don't even got some of the milk scriptures like you don't even understand that a milk scripture is indeed polygyny and this is why I made my video yesterday about facing the East because it's a like Jake doesn't understand that like we've been beaten down, like we were through as a nation, like the Apostle and Elder says. If it wasn't for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah pouring down the Rakhak Wadash, the Holy Spirit, we would be through because you can see it. We have low standards. We don't have an understanding of like 
what actual wisdom is and what actual understanding is. We hear polygyny and we think that it's some we, we just like our brains just really can't comprehend it. It just seems so outlandish and so out of this world to us because we've been raised in this Western Babylonian effeminate satanic society. But over in the East, even though there's countless heathen in the East, even in these heathen cultures, they practice it. They understand that it's natural. It's like if it's basic to a heathen, how much more would it be to us? And we and we're Jacob is the former of all things, as the scripture says. So we already understood what it was before they did. We just got discontinued from our heritage. So, you know, as soon as someone mentions it. And they come from this Western Babylonian perspective and they teach it to you, you will have the misconception. You will have the preconceived notion that there might be a chance that you had a man having more than one wife or having concubines is sinful. And it's not. It's just Jake is so discontinued from their heritage. They also discontinued from the full scope of their manhood. They discontinued from the full scope of who they are. Spiritually, mentally and physically. But nonetheless, polygyny is indeed a milk. It's a it's a milk part of the scriptures. And you're not going to find the word polygyny in this. So I don't want to confuse. You. I'll let you know right now. You're not going to find that word in it because it is indeed Greek. But the point is, the precepts about a man having more than one wife is in the scriptures. It's all throughout the Bible. Now, when you see a, a wicked example, that doesn't mean a man having more than one wife is wicked in and of itself. It means that that individual himself, he was probably doing some wickedness or you know, the scripture says the portion of it says a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man and vice versa, roughly paraphrasing. So simply sometimes that's all it is. And sometimes you have about Shai, he puts strife in certain marriages for the sake of prophecy. But it doesn't mean that that's sinful because you have about Shai, he's fair and he's just he, he would easily send a prophet to let that individual know in the scriptures. Hey, this is unlawful. You're not supposed to have multiple wives like the heavenly father. He lists our sins all the time. And this is what I was saying to that dude years ago in the comment section and he didn't understand it and this is when i was still learning the truth and even at that that young um fledgling stage that i was in i knew that much because at that time i think i had i had already read, read the scripture where it said all of king david's sins were recorded it was um i think the scripture that said that david kept all the commandments of the lord save for the matter of uriah the hittite and we all know that that famous that famous account of king david committing adultery with Bathsheba, who's the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and then getting Uriah the Hittite murdered. We all know that, that that account right there. So that means King David's only sins in the eyes of the Heavenly Father were that matter. And we know that King David also numbered Israel without being commanded to do so. But the scriptures also let you know explicitly that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua put the spirit of Satan on David to do that. And through the Apostle and others of Great Millstone, you get the deeper breakdown of realizing that the Heavenly Father controls the right hand side and the left hand side, good and evil. So he put Satan on David just so he can kill a certain number of Israelites. Because that's how he chose to do it. He could have done it another way, but that was how he chose to do it, because who can who can resist his will? But the point is, a man having more than one wife is a milk scripture. And you got individuals out here claiming to be woke, but don't understand that milk scripture. So how could these same individuals let you know about the mark, you know, the, the, the charagma? How could they give you the breakdowns of Joel, the second chapter, Joel, the third chapter? How could they give you the breakdowns of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter? You know, how could they give you the breakdowns of how could they give you the understanding that the Heavenly Father controls good and evil? In depth, because it's not enough to say, because with the Christian perspective, people will teach you that the Heavenly Father, yeah, he's greater than Satan. He just lets him run amok. It's deeper than that. Satan goes to Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, for permission to do everything that he's doing. That means the Heavenly Father co-signs it. That means he has to give the he has to give the green light for certain things to happen. No matter how off-putting it might seem to Jake, because Jake Two third Jake and just Jake in general by being in Babylon, but especially two third Jake. Jake is emotional. Jake will see a baby get deleted and think the Heavenly Father had nothing to do with that. You don't fear him, nor do you comprehend the fear of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. 
Yahweh Shmi Al Shai, he will he he will delete a child because that flesh might be new, but that spirit is ancient. That spirit did some wickedness in a past life that it never it never paid the tab for. So Yahweh Shmi Al Shai, when that spirit, you know, when that spirit gave up the spirit in his in his previous life, when the when that in his past life, when it perished and its flesh got buried into the ground and the spirit went back to the heavenly father who gave it, the heavenly father gave that spirit a judgment. It basically, the heavenly father told that spirit what was going to happen to it, whether the spirit remembers it or not. When they return back into the flesh, it's neither here nor there. But the point is, the heavenly father told that spirit, the heavenly father set the judgment. He brought that spirit back into, into the world through the, through the loins and lineage of his father of his father's lineage. And then at the appointed time, the judgment took place. But these Jakes couldn't teach you that. Like you got to learn how to start marking individuals that don't that don't rightly divide the word of truth. Because too many Jakes have large congregations based on having people that don't study the scriptures. They they study they, they st like we have a lot of congregations and a lot of individual self-willed lone wolf Israelites that they, they think they got their badge of honor because they study 20% more than the Christian church. So no one can question them. And they feel like, okay, people are so tired of the Christian church that as long as you actually open up the Bible, you're, you're an approved work, man. No, you're not. You're not. That's not how that goes. You have to really, really have the Rechak Wadash dealing with you because if, the, if it was as simple as buying a Bible, getting a concordance like some bug out girl said that the blood of Edelman Nata Zakba did a video about, then everybody would have the precepts. But the scriptures clearly states that Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, he has not dealt so with any other nation. So first off, he's only dealing with the nation of Israel. And then secondly, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, said that he's given us the... the uh, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of understanding that the world cannot receive, roughly paraphrasing. So if that's the case, that means that even amongst Israel, not all Israelites are going to understand these scriptures. The, the glory and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua wouldn't be magnified if anybody could just pick the book up and understand it. No, his power is shown by the fact that he can have something right there in plain sight and you haven't been given the spiritual eye solve to see it. And that you have physical working ears, but you still can't hear the words being said to you. I've seen that. It's been times where brothers at the camp gave a dude to gave, try to give these bug outs who walk up scoffing. They just try to give them the breakdown of what the lake of fire actually is. And they'll physically hear it. But because Jake is so fucking emotional, they act like a fucking, they act like bitches. They act like the bitches that raised them. They'll physically hear what you said and then walk away scoffing. Talking about, man, how the fuck that's going to be the case? And, you know, we, we, nigga, will you live in America? Like, motherfucker, nobody said he didn't. Clearly, he's physically right here talking to you in America, but he's letting you know what's going to happen at a future time. That's what it means to prophesy, to say before. But Jake is so emotional because Jake don't, Jake worrying about, Jake doing exactly what Lord Yahweh said not to do, which is taking thought of what they will eat today and what they'll eat tomorrow and all this other type of stuff. When Lord Yahweh Shah basically said, he gave us the parable basically saying, like, look at the birds, like, look at the animals. They they don't they don't work. They don't want for nothing. But the Heavenly Father still provides for them. And he said, aren't you greater than them? Two thirds Jake don't get that. He's the same Jake that was talking shit as the Heavenly Father shoot miracles. So, you know, they won't be able to understand the basic precepts and understandings of, OK, if you still eating, drinking liquor, you know, what I'm saying you st fucking smoking your black and miles and all this other shit. That's because the Heavenly Father's providing for you. He's providing you with the money that you want to do these things. And he's giving you mercy and enough. He's giving you mercy to get your shit together before he starts judging you. And if you just wicked, then, hey, he just giving you enough rope to hang yourself. But all of these things the Heavenly Father provides for you. But Jake not going to understand that. Let me get back to the uh, to the screen, to the, uh, the precept right here. Salakia. Continuing on, this is the book of John, chapter 10, verse 6, and it reads, This parable spake Yahweh Shah unto them, but they understood not what things they were, so like it, what things they were which he spake unto them. Verse 7, 
Then said Yahweh Shai unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So back to why this this goes in line with why I, um, I stopped at verse five and pulled and broke down a little bit of that. This gets into how any of these individuals that came before teaching other doctrine, not teaching the 144 percent doctrine, not letting you know all Israel is not going to be saved. Not letting you know the Heavenly Father is not dealing with the heathen nations, but he can use a heathen to do his bidding. We got precepts of that since the book of at least since the book of Numbers, when the Heavenly Father used. um, Who was that? Balaam. Yeah, he used Balaam, that, uh, that Moabite, that Moabite warlock, you know, because Balak, the king of Moab, he wanted to curse the children of Israel. Because he and he went to Balaam because Balaam was like a high level witch and he had a reputation at that time of being known to like whoever he cursed, they get cursed for sure. But Balaam was Balaam was in fear because he told he told Balak, look, I can't I can't curse these people. I can't curse what the heavenly father has blessed. And he even you and then when Balak, the king of Moab, kept insisting, OK, he went there and, and tried to curse the king of Israel. But the heavenly father, he put a spirit on him that made him that made him do the opposite. So he blessed the children of Israel. So it ain't nothing for the heavenly father to use these other nations. He could use a donkey. He even used the donkey in, in, uh, in the book of Numbers to speak to, uh, to Balaam, I believe. So. These type of things. These type of things show that. You have to understand if someone's not coming in that doctrine. If you are the hopeful elect, they're not coming. In, if the person that you're listening to is not coming in the 144% doctrine, it may not be. It may either be immediately or it may be tomorrow or maybe a month from now or maybe two months from now. But Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, through the Rechak Wadash that he's giving you and the portion of faith and understanding that he's giving you, you're going to come out of that. You're going to cut off. You're going to cut that individual off. You're going to stop listening to their channels. And he'll also start to. And then by that show of faith of coming out of that bullshit, the Heavenly Father, he'll give you the truth. He'll give you channels that teach the truth. He'll start supping with you. Lord Yahweh will start supping with you in the spirit and he'll give you the breakdowns and a true understanding that he didn't give to the bug out you was listening to previously. Because the scripture says in time past, the Heavenly Father winked at our ignorance concerning these things, roughly paraphrasing. And those things would be off doctrines. You walk in, uh, in the flesh or, you know, you just been ignorant of certain things that are sinful. But once you know about them, how you react is what differentiates you from a two third. And from there, since, you know, we still don't know who is the very elect until people start getting saved or until other prophecies start to get fulfilled. Like you see those who will be beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. You'll know at that point that's an elect. Once the standard gets raised and you have those that they try to behead, but the guillotine breaks against their necks and they escape, you'll know. Well, you'll have a better idea, Salakia. And you'll start to see, you know, the, the true men of the Lord, They you'll start to see them receive those spiritual powers. Because Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, he said, pertaining, like, pertaining to the miracles he was doing, he was telling the Apostle Peter and, you know, the other uh, of the apostles that all these things you see me do, you will do these things and even greater. He's referring to in these times. Once the MOTB gets made mandatory, once, you know, Esau starts coming down with great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time. Once all that we'll once we're at the point where all we're going to have is the law, statutes and commandments and the precepts and the covenants and the judgments and the promises that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai gave us since before the foundation of the earth. He's going to activate all of those things he already put in our spirit and he's going to lift up the standard like the blood brother uh, Amawan Abba always gets into. So anybody that doesn't come, anybody who came before Lord Yahweh Shai coming up another way. You know, teaching off ass doctrines because they don't understand the scriptures. But instead of studying to show themselves approved, they feel like they got to just keep making videos so they can keep heaping followers and disciples unto themselves. Cut them people off, man. Cut them people off. <sighs> yeah, and I think I'm going to get verse nine. You know, just, I, I wasn't going to do it, but, you know, 
spirit telling me to get it right now. So this is the book of John chapter 10 verse 9 and it reads, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. He careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the father knoweth me even so know i the father and i lay down my life for the sheep so this right here is lord yahweh shai letting you know that and this is like this this is deep no matter how many times i read it it's like i learn more and more as i read it the water yahweh bashim yahweh shai this precept is deep because it lets you know that these jakes that's doing that's in the truth for money or in the truth for the praise of men, you know, they're going to do everything that's off. They're going to do everything that's contrary to the doctrine. They're going to trim their way to seek love. They're going to do what they accuse the real men of the Lord of doing, which is cherry picking the scriptures. They accuse the real men of the Lord of cherry picking the scriptures because they can't understand certain things. Even though you see the real men of the Lord jump from Old Testament to New Testament to Apocrypha to New Testament, to Old Testament, to Old Testament, to Apocrypha. Back and forth, back and forth to let you know that the scriptures are all tied into each other. So the fucking confusion that the Christianity put on you can be removed. So that if you ever talk to a Muslim who try to make you feel like you were stupid for believing in the Bible, you can cut the bullshit that he's talking to. He don't know shit either because that was pushed on Jake by way of the Arab slave trade. That's not our religion. And when you get deep into the history, Islam got started by copying off of our law, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, Muhammad copied from the Hebrew Israelites. You can get that in that book, Babylon and Timbuk too. Everybody knows it, aside from Jake, apparently, aside from two-thirds Jake. You still got bug out, you know what I'm saying, bug out Muslim Jake walking past the camp time to time, Talking all that bullshit like they know something. They don't know shit. But you know, it says scoffers and mockers gonna pop up in the lab in the last days. So the water how about me out shot? Because these prophecies being fulfilled is a sign of the times that we almost up out of here. We ain't gotta keep hearing these stupid ass jakes. And Lord Yahweh shot gonna stomp a mud hole in these clowns, man. These jakes ain't got no prophecies coming out the Quran, but they keep talking shit. Like it is it, that shit gets irritating. But point being back on topic, this lets you know that these jakes that are doing this for compensation on this side of any form and they don't make the scriptures and the ministry their first love they're going to flee and they are and already like like lawyer how says in verse 10 that the thief coming not but for the steal and to kill and to destroy that's all that also goes into the precept of how we're not supposed to suffer sin upon our brother but we shouldn't any wise rebuke him so when you see um, when you see sincere, um, sincere uh, workmen like the beloved elder Manata Zakba of the South Carolina camp rebuking these clowns left and right, when you see the elders and apostles of Great Millstone in general rebuking these clowns, that's love. And like I said in one of my previous videos, Jake don't need motivational speaking from these clowns like Mark the Messenger. Jake need a foot in their ass. When you see a child fucking up and destroying shit in the house and you told him not to even touch the shit let alone be in that same room why the fuck would you motivate him that's the same shit esau do with the kids and that's why the kids be on that I, oh fuck you mom kids be five ten years old saying fuck you mom ten years old twelve years old doing whatever the fuck they want to do no jake need a foot in their ass because motivating jake to teach any while they teaching anything ass doctrine why are they still wearing fucking Shiva Jatas? Why are they still prophesying with their head covered? All things that's against Torah. All things that's against the Thawara, the law of the book. They don't need no motivation. 
They need motivation to get right with Yahweh Bashmi on Shabbat before they get destroyed. And that only comes through rebuke. It doesn't come through, oh, this oh, this Jake fucked up. Let me hand him out free turkeys. Let me give him a, a plot of land. No, fuck him. And if this was first covenant standards, these Jakes would be getting stone baths. <clears throat> but yeah, when you see, but like Lord Yahweh Shah said in this precept, that he that he's the good shepherd. And that he's going to give it and he laid down his life for the sheep. That's the example we follow. The true disciples in this in this era right here, we believe through faith and works are the apostles, the elders and, and the uh, sincere argument of great millstone and those that teach the like doctrine. Those that handle, you know, rebuke, scoffers, mockers, slander, um, threats of physical violence in some cases for this for the namesake of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, not leaning to the left or the right of the law. They don't give a fuck what these wicked ass motherfuckers got to say because these are Lord Yahweh Shah's words. The true workmen are going to they're going to make sure that they protect the body, which is why I named this video. If you don't give germs a pass with your body, you shouldn't do this. Like you should do the same with false doctrine. You should treat false doctrine like you should treat the sea ragamuffin. Jake was so afraid of the sea ragamuffin. They, list, they went to Esau for help. They fucking enemy. They completely forgot all about the fucking Tuskegee thing. But Jake think the doctrine is just about followers and just all this other weird shit. Jake is off. Lord Yahweh shall lay down his life for the sheep. So we have to do the same thing in the spirit. And in, in some of us, it's our lot to physically lay down our lives just like Lord Yahweh shall did. Some of us might get the firing line. Some of us might get, you know, the guillotine. Some of us might get, you know, who knows what we might get. And since we don't know our lot, the correct spirit to be in is whatever lot Lord Yahweh, Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai gives us, we have to pray that he gives us the spirit to endure it unto salvation. Whether he, whether we, we're those that have to be, you know, put to death for the witness of Yahweh Shai, or we get saved and we be and we are the examples that's used when Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach comes back and you know just when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai raises up the standard, if we get used as the example of that, like those that have the spiritual power, out here performing miracles, raising the dead, then that happens too. Whichever whichever lot the Lord gives us, we have to be of the spirit that it's an honor, and this is not our doctrine to change. The scriptures clearly says, lean not to thine own understanding. And you got Jake still doing the shit because they feel like nobody can check them. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't have left hand angels just smacking the shit out of them. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai don't have some left hand angels manifesting looking like Hellboy and giving these motherfuckers the beat down. They just teach whatever they want to teach. And that shit is off. And that, but that shit going to come to an end real soon as these prophecies keep rolling out. So, yeah, those that really care, those that really are defenders of the body, that keeps the body in, in sound health of a sound mind. Those are the real men that's following Yahweh Shah, not these clowns that want to have unity camps. No matter how good it may seem to you, Jake, because you in the flesh and it seems good to have some fresh water or uh, or what, uh, what or some land or some shit like that. So you can try to, like, relive your fantasy of getting 50 acres and a mule from Esau but that you never got, you know, all of that shit got to be let go. All of that shit got to be let go, man. You got to understand that this is not meant to be fun for us. This is meant to be a captivity. So we can understand we went off. And Jake is simple, man. It doesn't matter what the good intentions of some of these Jakes is. Fuck them too if they don't understand that, nigga, you don't deserve shit. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah should put you to death as well as the rest of us because we all went off. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is. You need to pray for the spirit to endure. Not, oh, well, if we keep, if, you know, if we, if we apply these commandments, we'll be straight. No, the fuck we, look, man, you can't apply these commandments while in this flesh, which is why we need the new bodies, which is why we need the new covenant. And no, we're not in the new covenant yet. So if you do anything contrary to what the scripture says, yes, you are likened unto the, unto the thief and the robber that's, Lord Yahweh Shah mentions right here in John the 10th chapter coming up another way. You're not coming by way of Yahweh Shah. To follow Yahweh Shah means to suffer. You got to keep 
Patience, like the beloved brother Ganon told me, patience, the other word that you can get from patience means to suffer in context of the scriptures. We're going to have to suffer wrongfully, but we got to, you know, saying we got to uh, strive lawfully. And it don't mean don't prepare, you know, if you if you got the means to prepare, you know, that's one thing. But quit with all this unity camp bullshit, man. And quit with all this fucking um, what's the word I want to use? Stop trying to puff yourself up because you're doing charity, nigga. Like I keep saying, like for Jake's that's doing that shit or even the Jake's that's not doing it, but they keep fucking trying to make it seem like unity is the answer. Quit that bullshit, man, because none of you Jake's came to the knowledge of the truth on your own. How about Shemiao Shah gave a portion of faith to every single one of us through the Rakhak Wadash? And just because you know something today don't mean that you're going to endure unto salvation. That's why you got to seek diligence to make your call and election sure. Remain meek and humble. And anytime you slip up, you gotta you gotta examine yourself, and you gotta you know, you gotta rebuke yourself in those in those occasions. You gotta be constantly ready to rebuke yourself, so your howl me out shy doesn't have to have another brother rebuke you, because a lot of you jakes don't like rebuke anyway. But even that even that effeminate ass spirit, that gotta go, man. There's too many jakes that think they know everything, and they don't know shit. And I'm I'm talking about. This isn't about fucking debate. This is about salvation. This is about actual life and death. Because Jake's not understanding, man. You can get land all you want to. This is Esau's world. Babylon the Great just so happens to be the capital. But the book of Job, the ninth chapter, and the 24th verse clearly states the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And that's not just metaphorical. That's literal. He already has bases set up in parts of the land of Ham, so-called Africa. He has bases set up, damn it, every way he needs to have them set up in the world. And you got Jake's keep on thinking that we can keep on fleeing to Africa and Africa this and Africa that. And also watch out for these Jake's that go from talking about us being Israelites to trying to say that Africa is the cradle of civilization. That shit pisses me off. It's not the cradle of civilization. That's what Esau pushes. So you got to understand Esau is the serpent, man. He's very deceptive. He knew that we would come into the truth of who we are. So even then he set a stumbling block up. He set the Africa stumbling block. So that these jakes will keep on talking about Africa, Africa. No, Israel is in Western Asia. The Garden of Eden is in Western Asia. There is no Middle East. It's Western Asia, West Asia, Israel, Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, uh, uh, Yemen, Oman, Saudi Arabia. These nations are in Western Asia. We all know about continents, right? We know that there's seven continents. You got North America, South America. You got you got Asia, Europe, Africa, Antarctica. Like we we got we got these continents, man. Like, and then you know, <coughs> Salakia. We got these continents out here, man. Like, everything is sitting on one of these continents. Did I mention Australia? I may or may not have mentioned Australia if I didn't. Salakia, but we got continents, man. Everything's sitting on a continent. And Esau is that deceptive that people let that Middle Eastern shit go for years. And even even every now and then, Akim and the truth still still let the word Middle East slip, even if they know it. But that's not because they being insincere. It's just a simple fact of that's how deep the deception goes. And we got you Jakes out here acting like we don't have to study the scriptures. Words hold power, man. And then when you don't know the right words, you you miss out on understanding. And you also end up not feeding the flock of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua's sheep the way that you need to. You letting germs enter into the congregation and you want niggas to praise you. That shit off. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 7 and it reads, Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy power in vain for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Yeah, and a lot of you jakes do that, man. You, you jakes be forgetting that we have countless scriptures where the Lord tells us something straightforward and he, en and he ends it with, I am the Lord. You know, Jake has a habit of saying, yeah, point blank period after they finish something. Or like, or they had, or Jake can say like, end the discussion. The heavenly father, all he needs to say is his name. There's nothing greater than his name. So he'll tell you these things and he'll say, I am Yahweh. Thou shalt not do such and such. I am Yahweh. This is a reason why the heavenly father says that, man. With names comes a reputation, a memorial, a remembrance of how a certain entity or a certain place is known to be. 
So when the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi al says, I'm the Lord, I change it not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's all we need to know. We don't need no fucking unity camp to not be consumed. You make it easier to be consumed. You know Esau is a bloody individual, man. You know Esau has no problem mass murdering a bunch of Jakes. And you stupid ass niggas want a bunch of Jakes to not only corral together in one setting. You want these same Jakes. To corral together in one setting under different fucking doctrine? Let's put the doctrine aside. That's the same shit Esau did with, Gad with the Gadites. Let's put such and such aside and do treaties. I know that's probably not a thing that you guys do, but let's try it. Ain't have no leverage to be telling Gad what to do. But for the sake of prophecy, it happened and Gad had their land taken away from him. You've been shown that this motherfucker can't be trusted. And you and you not understanding that planning to that unity shit, you're not worship, you're not following your Howard Bosch Miao You're taking his name in vain, you worshiping Baal Barith. Which is that God of the community. That that unity bullshit, man. It's disgusting. It's irritating. And like you saying Jakes are the main ones. You show that you worship Baal Barith because that's your main fucking talking point against the apostles and elders of Great Millstone or against, you know, camps in general. You hate that the camps are dividing with doctrine, not realizing that that division, the Heavenly Father, he's a separatist. He's always been that way. The scripture clearly says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And you niggas keep acting like the, how, like the Heavenly Father's going to change because you tired of having to look over your shoulder around Jake. Well, man, the fuck up. It's part of the curses. You went off. So you got to bear the curses. We all went off. But what you don't do, you don't bring that fucking... You don't bring that fucking autoimmune disease into the body. That autoimmune disease of unity, that that Baal Barith bullshit. You don't bring that into the body and acting like you better than somebody. Like, what the hell is wrong with you niggas, man? That's why that's why Jake is just always off, man. Jake's always get caught up in what they see. The two third Jake always get caught up in what they see. And they miss the spirit of things, man. It's a spirit behind idolatry. It's a spirit behind rebelliousness, which is witchcraft. If the Lord says don't do something, you simply don't do it. And if you don't understand the instructions, if you have an instructions not clear moment, you inquire of Yahweh Bashem Shah by way of his service to prophets. You don't push your shit because that's all you know. And you portray it like you understand more than the men that's been laboring in this thing for decades. That made it. That through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, they labored in this for decades. They stayed true to the faith. And they gave and they made the ministry where we can enter into other and we can enter into these labors. We entered into the labors of other men. They made it where we have them as a reference to go back on. We have lessons to go back as a reference to make sure we don't go off when we teach. Because teaching the correct doctrine is part of your salvation. That's a that's a a pivotal part of your salvation. The Heavenly Father sees everything, man. You cannot be out here thinking that these charity events take precedence over over the uh over the ministry. You act like niggas knowing that they Israelites is gonna stop you from having those unruly jakes stopping past to your little unity camp gatherings just to get food. You can have an agent stop past just to get food because you niggas don't care about doctrine. It's the doctrine that helps you identify a fucking agent. It's the doctrine that helps you identify a potential demon in the making, a potential provocateur. So you got Jake's that just open their fucking mouth saying any old fucking thing, and they just basically letting disease in, man. You trying to have a body riddled with disease just so you can have a fucking payout, so you can have an easier swing at going through these curses? Fuck all y'all type of, fuck all y'all Jake's that fall in that category, man. Man, you how about me out shot judge you niggas and jack y'all the fuck up unless you repent. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, starting in verse one. And it reads, if there rise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or wonder and the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt know, Salakia, thou shalt not he hearken unto the words of that prophet. Or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh, Allah Yahweh, proveth you to know whether ye love Yahweh, 
Salakia, whether ye love Yahweh Allah Hayanawa with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after Yahweh Allah Hayanawa and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from Yahweh Allah Hayanawa, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which Yahweh Allah Hayanawa commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. And a lot of you jakes keep taking shit for a joke with the heavenly father, man. It doesn't matter how the fuck you feel about what we going through. It doesn't matter that you feel some type of way that we're not unified. You think the apostles and elders don't feel some type of way about it? The comfort is the scriptures, like the scripture says. Did not Lord Yahweh Shah say he would send us, he would not leave us comfortless? That he would send down the Holy Spirit, the spirit of comfort. We got that, so we don't care that Jake is divided. We understand it has to be that way for the sake of prophecy. John the Baptist didn't want to baptize Lord Yahweh because he said, I have need to be baptized of you. But Lord Yahweh said, suffer it to be so, so we can fulfill this prophecy, essentially. And you Jake's ain't coming in that spirit, man. You Jake's worrying about what the fuck you want, like an out of, like an out of order bitch, like and this shit irritating. Y'all don't understand that the Heavenly Father, he considers you going up another way evil. And just because, that's, and I'm glad I brought this out too, the water Yahweh Shem Yahweh because it also gets into, for the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, you jakes out there that's young and new in the truth. Just because these, these individuals you listen to bring out certain little small things and say, oh yeah, I see, I told you it's going to happen. That don't mean nothing. This scripture gets into that. This scripture gets into, yeah, like, okay, like verse one and two lets you know that if the sign come to pass and they say, let us go after other gods. That's letting you know right there that that sign came to pass. One, one because the Heavenly Father, he willed it to come to pass, not because that prophet is so great. Two, mm, it's like you. Two, that sign coming to pass still lets you know that that doesn't mean that that prophet is right. That doesn't mean that that's a righteous prophet sent from the Lord. It's a test from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah to see whether or not you love him and fear him. Because he can easily make something happen and see, are you going to follow cult of personality? Oh, see, well, he says such and such is going to happen and it happened. See, he said that Kyrie Irving believed that he's an Israelite and it happened. It doesn't mean anything. It's still a test. It doesn't mean you go off. It doesn't mean you fucking try to form a unity camp. It doesn't mean you support unity camps. That shit is a cancer, man. You got to really be vigilant in the body. And we got scriptures talk and we got scriptures that get into how each member of the body has its own role. Like the eye can't the eye can't envy the mouth. The mouth can't envy the ear. The right eye can't envy the left eye. The leg can't envy the arm. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, I understand that even on a deeper, like on in the same type of in the same type of vein, it may not be mentioned in the scriptures, but yeah, like. Your white blood cells can't be given foreign diseases a pass. Your white blood cells are, are, are likened unto the watchmen of Israel in the, in the days of old. They had to blow the trumpet like, oh, well, we got a foreign disease. OK, he got past the initial defenses. He uh, he about to attack one of the vital organs, blow the trumpet. <laughs> Next thing you know, you know, what I'm saying you probably catching a little bit of a fever. You know, what I'm saying you got to lay down. But all of that, that's your body having an automatic defense. It may hurt for a while, but that's what your body going through the purge of disease. These jakes don't want to be uncomfortable, man. These jakes rather let all types of disease have a fucking a siesta in the body. Have a fucking fiesta in the body and just, you know, oh, it's all cool because we jake. No, it's not cool. It's in our law to put away wicked jakes, to put away evil from Israel. And it is evil to try to get us to do other things that has nothing to do with the scriptures. It doesn't matter how small it might seem to you. And if you got that spirit on you where you think that the apostles, the elders, and the sincere archim that teach the like doctrine are being petty, then fuck you. You off. And you likely a two-third is going to get destroyed anyway. It's not for you to determine whether or not the laws are petty. You petty. 
all this dumb shit we do in the flesh, and you got Jake that's still opening their mouth talking about y'all guys are overly religious. Just dumb shit, man. Jake always worrying about the wrong shit, fun and all this other type of shit. This is the book of John, chapter 15, starting in verse 16. This is Red Letter, so it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking again. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. And loving one another is teaching sound doctrine. Loving one another is making sure you don't sit right here and justify Hanging around fucking sinners, hanging around bug outs, fellowshipping with bug outs, breaking bread with bug outs, because breaking bread is spiritual, too. We all know that, you know, it's different on the plantation, you know what I'm saying? You really don't have a choice. You got to be, you know, Clark Kent. But when it comes to this truth in the scriptures, you got to be Superman, man. So if you fucking got the chance to do it, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have to do it, don't do it. And yeah, you like you have not chosen your Hawabah Shem Yahweh Shai. He chosen you. That alone should humble you to make you really examine what you're doing. You niggas got no right to be trying to change the doctrine and insert this all Barith shit, no matter whether you're doing it ignorantly or on purpose. If you're doing it ignorantly, even more reason why you should go back to the fucking drawing board, empty out that bullshit you got in your cup, clean it out, and pour in living water. Because this unity shit is not it, man. It's not. You got too many off-ass jakes pushing unity, bitching about unity, getting into the elders and apostles' comment section talking about, oh, well, what are y'all doing for this and that? What are you doing for such and such? Like, shut the fuck up. Making sure you dumb niggas don't go head first into a FEMA camp. That's what the apostles and elders are doing. That's what the sincere argument is doing. Giving you, giving you the true... Giving you a true power and ability that Esau cannot take away from you. A power and ability that will really protect you in the times to come. A time that's going to be like nothing that was ever seen before on the face of the earth. That's what they're doing. Not kissing your fucking ass and telling you what the fuck you want to hear. And leading you off a ditch is what they're doing. Not having you put faith in carnality like you always kept doing, which led you into captivity. Showing you the right way to go for once in your fucking useless life. That's what they're doing for you two third niggas. But you're not going to listen anyway. So this that's simply just for them to get the blood off their hands like the scripture said to do. And they still have it in and they still have it in them through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bash Shai. To extend an olive branch of love out to you clowns and rebuke you from so you don't do the stupid shit. And for you hopeful elect that's in it, come out of it. You're going to get it in due time. But my sincere prayer is that y'all get it a lot sooner. Because if you really love Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, then like myself, you're going to feel a little bit of guilt or a good amount of guilt that you had time wasted from doing the work because of wayward doctrine. And, you, and you'll even see the fruits of this wayward doctrine, man. You'll see how off these jakes are out here. It should vex you in your soul that this late in the game, you still got fucking Jake talking about some praise y'all. Abbreviating uh, that uh, A, what, the, what is that? That A-T-T-P-M-H, like, what, like they abbreviating all praise to the most high. Like, who is your most high? There's God's many and Lord's many. Yah is simply a Hebrew way of saying he, and Yah is also the 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. That is not the name of the Heavenly Father. It should piss y'all off that you still got Jake don't know the name of the only begotten son and not teaching it. And some Jakes know it and don't teach it. They don't teach the name of the Father or the Son. Some of them know it and don't teach it. Others don't know it at all, but they still fucking teach and still talking shit about what the apostles, elders, and, and what camps ain't doing. And you niggas can't save nobody. This ain't a contest to see how much we can do in Babylon despite the curses. This is about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
and praying that Yahweh Bashem El Shaddai takes not his Holy Spirit from you. That he purges you of your iniquity and washes you of your sins. This is not about a pissing contest to see if we better than the passport bros. To see if we better than the chemical community. To see if we better than this camp or that camp. It's not about that. It's no competition for those. It's like if you're trying to weigh the men of the Lord against anything else out here, it ain't no competition because ain't nothing else shit. None of these fleshly motherfuckers is shit compared to the true men of the Lord. The men that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai raised up. Ain't no real men of Yah. Yah is not the Heavenly Father's name for any of you. Any of you individuals still talking about some Yah, evaluate yourself, man. How do you even feel comfortable in the spirit? Oh, the Heavenly Father's name is Yah. It was, no. The Heavenly Father's name has a meaning. And a memorial. That, his name is his memorial forever. Yahweh, he's the ancient of days. This is why you have to have line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. You can't just stop at, you can't just stop at the basics like, oh, we the Israelites because of Deuteronomy 28. You can't just stop at, oh, we know that John 3, 16 is talking about Israelites. You can't just stop at, oh, a man could have more than one wife. You can't just stop at, I suffer not a woman to teach. You got to get deep into this thing, man. Because even though you can have multiple wives. The scriptures also says all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Even though it is lawful to deal with the harlot in the right circumstances, it may not be expedient for every brother. And also you got to weigh the conditions of the captivity. We reach, we get into a time where everything is costing more and more and the MOTB is about to be rolled out. Do you really want to spend your money on one of these harlots? Or do you want to wait until Isaiah 4 and 1 comes around where you have a higher chance of getting women that's going to be in line? And even then, when Isaiah 4 and 1 comes around, you got to have discernment of the spirit. You got to properly apply, you got to properly apply the precepts, Salakia, because you got women that will pretend to be righteous. Just like right now, we got these fake ass Proverbs 31 women out here. Not, and that's not every that's not every Israelite sister and not every Israelite sister is on that. So it don't apply to y'all. If you know if the shoe fit, wear it. If it's not you, you good. You already know through the spirit. I ain't talking about you. But for those ones that want to wear the head wraps and act like they're in the truth, then as soon as they man is telling them about the scriptures, they got a fucking opinion. That's that's where Hebrew 412 kicks in. That's where Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12 kicks in. How the scriptures are discerned of the thoughts and intents of the heart. These women will always say that they with you, they this and they that, until you bring out them scriptures. Until it's like, hey, you ain't supposed to be in the church running your mouth. That's a shame unto you. That's a shame unto me. That's out of order. The Heavenly Father did not give you no office to teach the scriptures. And before y'all used Deborah, that was a that was a reproach unto Israel during that time because Israel was going off in that captivity so hard, just like similar to Babylon. You got women compassing the man because most Jake don't want to take charge. Most Jake got removed from that Eastern spirit and they in this Western Babylonian Egyptian simp shit. This woman worship. This is, oh, my queen and we're equals and all this black woman God fucking vagina worship bullshit enough of that man that shit is really fucking tiresome let me get what's becoming one of my new favorites now the book of romans chapter 16 verse 17 and it reads now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them start a unity camp avoid them put the doctrine aside avoid them Would you niggas come together with Esau after learning everything that the apostles and the elders brought out through the spirit and power of your Yahweh Shemiel shot over the years? Would any of you niggas go back to Esau after realizing that he indeed painted over he painted over the image of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah? That he painted over the image of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, the Ancient of Days? That he painted over the image of the angels, our brethren? And our fellow servants that he painted over our images and made us think that the saints were all a bunch of fucking leprous red Hebrew Edomites. And leprosy is a sin. Le like, Salaki, like leprosy is a sign that an individual is unclean. And since our Lord was perfect in the law, that's how we, another way we know that he couldn't have possibly been looking like an Edomite. Long hair is a shame unto the man according to the law of Moses. And our Lord was perfect in the law of Moses. So we know Lord Yahweh didn't have no long ass girly ass hair. That Cesare Borgia bullshit ass picture, man. Like, come on. Wake up, Jake. And, and, for the, and for these, and for a lot of these Jakes 
that call themselves Yah Israelite, these two third Yah Israelites. They some clowns because essentially they don't worship Yahweh Shah. They don't worship the Heavenly Father Yahweh. They worship black Jesus. Because if you notice, they don't even, they say Christ, which is just a title and it's Greek at that. They say that more than they say the name of the only begotten son because they don't know it. They still juggling between whether it's Yeshua, uh, Yeshia, Yehoshua, Yehusha, all this other bullshit, man. They still juggling the names. And you think these motherfuckers can save you? Would you go to war? Would you go to war and you had a, and you have an armor bearer that can't identify your bow and arrow from your spear? Would you go to war with a Jake? Would you go to war with a Jake that don't got no knowledge of weaponry at all? But he's picking fights. Would you go to war with a Jake that. Would you go to war with a Jake that's, that basically is telling you, let's love our enemies. And let's walk up and put ourselves in one big camp. Let's make one big encampment in the middle of the of, of the field that we in. Knowing our enemy has an on site mentality when they see us. Let's just all pile up right here. I know we all don't like each other. I know that he committed adultery against you, brother. I know he did that last week, but let's put that aside. I know this Jake right here believes that the, the, the black woman is God, but let's put that all aside. I know that this Jake right here believes that, oh, uh, it's unlawful to deal with more than one woman, but let's put that aside. I know this Jake right here believes that, oh, y'all some rapists because you brought out the law about the consequences of rape. Just talking about it, that's sinful. I know, so I know this Jake has this weak ass effeminate Christian spirit, but let's all come together and make one camp in the middle of a fucking hot zone against an enemy that loves bloodshed and doesn't spare old or young men, women, or children. Let's do that. Let's talk about how unified we are with no hedge of protection. So when he does come down with great wrath, we can't do anything besides sing fucking Kumbaya. Let's do that. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Because these Jakes, these Jakes are fucking, these Jakes are the big C of the body of, of Hamashiach Yahawashai. These Jakes are, are the fucking, the Hiv. Of the body of Yahweh Shai. These Jakes are the sea ragamuffin. These Jakes are the jump shot, the Capri Sun of the body of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Because they don't understand that you don't have a body, even in the flesh, you don't have a good, you don't have a healthy body if you don't got no immune system. Our immune system is sound doctrine. It's the 144% doctrine. The truth of the scriptures that we got given, that we've been blessed with by Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, sending down as Rechak Wadash. It's not trimming our ways to seek love. It's not none of that weak shit that you Jakes got into. And this is why it's important to know the names and to teach the names. So the Heavenly Father, he can put his spirit on you and he can dwell with you. He's not going to dwell within some effeminate ass Jake that's too afraid. He's that's too afraid to, conf to too afraid to profess his name amongst this wicked ass generation. You can't even say his name right, but he's but he's supping with you. But he's not dealing with the camps because they're not doing charity. You can't profess his name. But we supposed to come together with you? You don't even know him. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 and it reads, Can two walk together except they be agreed? La'a. -ah. No in the Paleo-Hebrew. No. And you're not going to see no examples of that in the scriptures. And if you do see an example of that in the scriptures, the, the individuals that was walking together, that shit didn't end well. Individuals that don't agree, that don't agree, they're not walking together and having a cohesive unit. Because there ain't no honor among thieves. And, they and our, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, just liking any man coming up another way, he likened them unto a thief and a robber. And there ain't no honor among thieves. So think about that the next time... These Jakes trying to push that unity doctrine on you, Israel. That shit is not a game, man. That's the same thing as them trying to give you a life-threatening fucking 
a life-threatening plague. That shit is not a game. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 16 and it reads, For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh shall plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Does that sound like he's coming back to unify all Israel? That sounds to me like you Jakes forgot that he said there's going to be a great sacrifice in Basra. Spiritual Basra is here. America, Babylon the Great, ran by Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Because his, Esau's Basra used to be in Edom, south of Israel. Physically, now spiritually, it's here. And Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, he's no stranger of rounding up a bunch of wicked-ass Jake and putting, them, putting all their ass to the sword all at once. He did it through Abimelech in the book of Judges, the ninth chapter that uh, the beloved elder apostle Gabar brought out. Once again, going back to that Baal Barith bullshit. Had all their ass in one building and set their ass on fire. He turned that building into one big oven for all these wicked ass off unity jakes. United, united you stand, together you will indeed fucking fall. Because the Heavenly Father's not dealing with that shit, man. You don't. At once, at no time do you Jakes consult the Heavenly Father before you come up with these dumbass doctrines. Let's all come together. The fuck out of here. No stratagem at all, but let's all come together. This is the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, and it reads, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of the Most High Yahweh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Yes, and you have fault. If, if any Jake is teaching unity, on this side, he's a false prophet by default. It don't matter if you fucking like him or not. I didn't have anything personal against these guys that I learned from at first. I have nothing personal against them now. This is just about defense of the doctrine. They don't they don't matter at all to me. They didn't like come on now. That's the point. We gotta understand that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he wants sacrifice. He wants us to put him in his word and his only begotten son first because he gave us his only begotten son to be humiliated to bring our wicked asses back. And if you need more motivation, look no further than at a fucking unity, Jake. Look how off they are compared to the doctrine. Look no further than a Jake that's going to try to tell you that chicken is unclean when the heavenly father gave us quail and manna. And quail and chicken in the same family. Look no further than the Jake that's trying to tell you honey's unclean because he doesn't fucking understand that the dietary laws, they primarily are geared towards clean and unclean animals. Honey is clean. And you have examples of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, eating honey. Jonathan, the son of King Saul, ate honey. John the Baptist ate honey. And you know through the accounts that even though Saul was wicked, his son Jonathan wasn't wicked. His son Jonathan, he was he had good rapport with David. He loved David like he loved himself. He was like a brother to David. So, and I, I said this because I know how off these Jakes is. They carnal as shit. They like, oh well, he was Saul's son, so that must have made him wicked by default. Well, Negro, by that same logic, Asa was wicked because Abijam was his father, and Abijam was wicked. No, that's not how that works. It's all based on how Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It base, it's based on the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and how he made that spirit. It has not, it has, the flesh has only a bit to do with it, but that's not the ultimate deciding factor. Now, one last precept, and I'm going to wrap this one up. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and I'm going to get verse 21, and it reads, My son, fear thou Yahweh and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? So if you got individuals like native IUIC changing up the breakdowns and changing up the doctrine every fucking two seconds. As much as he changes fucking garments. As much as he changes his fucking socks. You got a problem. You ain't supposed once in, you're not supposed to associate with him. Why? Because every two seconds you'll have a new doctrine. You'll have more doctrine. You'll have more doctrine than Egypt had gods and goddesses. You'll be lost in the sauce. That's the definition of being lost in the sauce. And also, this is another scripture that's promoting separation. Separation between who? 
between those that stick to the doctrine that stand stiffly for the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and those that are given to change. Did not the Lord say, I'm the Lord, I change not? Let me, yeah, let me get that through the spirit. It's the book of Malachi, chapter three, verse six, and it reads, for I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The heavenly father is not changing. He at no time is he going to make us all unite while we're in the sinful flesh. If King David, a man after his own heart, can commit two of the most death worthy sins. What do you think these lesser Jakes are going to do if they all around each other? David did this while Israel was essentially like on top. They still had wars to deal with and stuff like that, but Israel was established as a nation when King David did this to Uriah. So what do you think Jake's going to do when you when they on the bottom, they don't got shit? When the crab and the barrel mentality is at an all time rise. Where you got Negroes not discerning the spirits nowhere near as much as they think they are because they just so pressed to have unity and say, I, I brought Israel together. I'm chief general bishop this. What are you camps doing for the community? We got we got land. We didn't build wells. We didn't. All that shit going to be destroyed. So what the fuck are you really saying? Let me see if I can get the right precept for this. One more precept. The water Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. This is Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44, and it reads, For I am Yahweh, your power. Ye shall sanctify, it's like it, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, this is the dietary laws. This, this pertains to the dietary laws, but there's still a spiritual precept behind it. The Heavenly Father, he's still essentially telling us to be holy as he is holy. Because I just got that scripture in the book of Malachi, the third chapter, where he says, he is the Lord, he changeth not. The Lord is also holy. And what does the word holy mean? Let's see. Let's get that. Strong's age, 6918. Kadosh, Kadosh, second entry, Kadosh, Kadosh. So essentially it's Kwa Dawash, Kwadash, and it means holy, set apart, outline of biblical usage, sacred, holy, holy one pertaining to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, saint, pertaining to the nation of Israel, set apart his saints. You can, you get countless scriptures saying his saints. Fear ye the Lord, O ye his saints. His saints are the Israelites. They're the only ones that can be saints because they're the only ones that he set apart. It's, it's, the, it's the Hebrew Israelite thing to mark those among us that cause division and avoid them. It's the Hebrew Israelite thing to rebuke our neighbor. We're not niggas, man. That no snitching shit has to die with nigger culture. That shit has to go. We not a bunch of fucking criminals, man. We don't we don't to love to <laughs> being holy and set apart does not mean join a unity fucking camp, man. Let me see if I can get this other preset, man. I I, I said I was gonna close it out, but you know how the spirit go. The water, how about me? I'll shy. This is first Peter chapter three, verse 11. And it reads, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. <sighs> let me get that also in the NLT. First Peter chapter three, verse 11 in the NLT on the right hand side. And it reads, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. And you can't have peace with niggas that have different doctrine. 
they don't even see they don't even have enough accountability in the spirit they they're not even they don't have the spirit that king david did they don't have that spirit of repentance king david once he was rebuked by by the prophet nathan for what he did to uriah he immediately felt guilt he felt fucked up and he repented and he wrote and he wrote one of the best psalms that we can use in this era during that time psalms 51 Where it gets where it gets revealed to us that the sacrifices of the heavenly Father are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That's what he wants more than the burnt offering. So through your through his only begotten Son Yahweh Shah, we have the grace period to do these things. We have the grace period to not, you know. We can offer up sacrifice to the heavenly Father without having a lamb of the first year without blemish. We can uh, we can probably apply Yahweh Shah for grace if we have to work on the Sabbath and, and, and for grace for the laws we can't keep. Like we can't keep the law about mixed fabrics. We can't keep it perfectly unless we rich. So for those Jakes that may have a little bit more money than the other Jakes, yeah, sure, you can keep that. But we also understand keeping the whole law isn't going to get you salvation. And even if it did, you couldn't keep it anyway, 100 percent in this flesh. Only Lord Yahweh Shah was able to do that. So we need Lord Yahweh Shah for salvation, not a unity camp. These niggas don't have enough of a repentant spirit to fucking put away their false doctrine. They feel like their false doctrine has a, has a fucking a right to live. Like these wicked ass Jake's here that with this fucking peanut butter chaser shit and this LGB Salaki and this alphabet shit, man. Like it, it's it's just it's just off. Like if you know that something's cancerous, why are you giving it a right to live? These false doctrines don't have no right to live. They need to be blotted out. Ain't no putting aside the doctrine, man. So, yeah, treat false doctrines like you treat germs if you want to be healthy. Treat them like you would treat an STI. Mark them and avoid them. If you didn't know what it was before and you caught it, okay, go ahead and get that booster shot. Get that spiritual booster shot through these scriptures and repenting. And then, yeah, don't ever go, don't ever deal with that, don't ever deal with that harlot again. That's how you got to treat it. But this is all I wanted to get into for this lesson. Hopefully this is edifying to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, the only ones that are going to be saved on this side. As always, I want to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere archim of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbear. And a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babal. We almost got next. Adawan Ratazah. Be sober, be vigilant, and keep these germs away from you. Shalom.